Slate and the, one of the founders of Graphite. It's great to be here in uh, LA in particular because, uh, you know, contrary to what some people think, LA does have a burgeoning tech scene and a burgeoning startup scene, uh, and we're happy to be a part of that. Uh, happy to see other folks that are out, out there. Um, and uh, again, uh, to ask a question, um, please text the word question to 626-414-3210. Thanks to QList, we'll have a virtual Q&A session up on a, on a web browser after we get done here. Um, but I think if there are any hard questions, QList has agreed uh, to filter them so that the hard questions go to the bottom of the list. Is that right? Alex, is that not hard by me? That's right. Okay, great, awesome. We'll just hand those over to Alex. Anyways, so let's tell you a little bit about Graphite. Um, Graphite is a professional networking tool that's designed to help you efficiently move people from contacts to relationships. So let's show you how to do that. First of all, Graphite knows who's in your networks. Graphite sits on top of your different address books and your different social and professional networks and provides an up-to-date, aggregated view of who you know. Second of all, Graphite tracks who Graphite tracks where you're networking day in and day out without you having to tell it everything you do. It monitors your multiple inboxes, calendars, phone calls on smartphones, and social networking interactions. So Graphite is able to keep track of with whom you're interacting, for how long, in what medium, and with what frequency. And Graphite lets you teach it which meetings or events are relatively better than each other. Because you know we all know that some meetings really rock, and there's occasional meetings that suck pretty bad. right? Um, third thing that Graphite learns is why you're networking. <laughs> It learns your personal business goals. Graphite lets you individually or in clusters rank the relative importance of people in your networks to your business goals. It allows you to set relationship targets for individual people. Because there's some people that all you need from them is to be a basic contact. Where there are other people that you want to have that are actively promoting you and cheerleading for you all the time. So Graphite knows who's in your network, where you're networking, and why you're networking. And because of that, its algorithms can go to work for you. Graphite, many have said, by, by knowing your business goals and sitting on top of all your networks, Graphite's sort of a little bit like the eHarmony meets Mint.com for professional networking. Uh, so we crunch all that data at Graphite, and our, and our systems create for you a personalized call sheet. It's an evergreen, continuous, recommended <laughs> list of people with whom you ought to be interacting. Um, and that call sheet really makes you more efficient as a networker in several ways. The first way it helps make your life better is it because of its comprehensiveness. Graphite is actively monitoring all your networks and all your networking. And because of that, you don't ever need to worry that someone who's important to you is going to fall through the cracks. So in this case, you'll see that at the top of my call sheet is a recommendation that I have to be interacting with a guy named Ted Mizell. Now, for me, that's actually a pretty good recommendation because Ted's an important guy in my network. He's a former boss of mine. Many of you know he's an active investor and a big wig kind of here in the LA tech scene. And I haven't spent that much time with Ted lately. So to get a recommendation to spend some time building up my relationship with Ted is actually really useful. Also really useful to me is that Graphite shows me a visual graph of the history of my relationship with Ted, tracking it over time and how the relationship ebbs and flows by the different interactions I have. And you can see that my relationship with Ted has sort of started to erode because we haven't been in touch all that much lately. So with this information in hand, it's really easy for me to, jot up, jot, to dash up a quick email to Ted saying, hey Ted, it's been a few months since we've been in touch. Hope you're doing well. Let's get together and have lunch next time I'll go around the west side. Um, so that's really a great way that Graphite helps me out. So Graphite, um, a tool that is really good at knowing who's important to me and reminding me that better than my memory is already going to make me more efficient, but we don't stop there with Graphite. And another way it helps out is in situations where who you ought to be networking with is dependent on a particular context. Uh, oftentimes, that context really affects who you want to be spending time with. And Graphite will filter your call sheet and only show you those people that are important to you who are relevant to that context. Great use cases, let's say I'm going to New York next week for business. I can just come into Graphite and type New York, and my call sheet will be filtered to show me the most important people in my network according to my business goals who are in New York. So I can send them emails or make phone calls now to get meetings set up 
so that my time with them next week will be most productive. One minute. Next, uh, the third thing, the third way that graphite is really useful and helpful is uh, a situation that probably none of you have ever experienced. Have you ever been in a case where, let's say, you're in an airport and your flight is delayed by an hour? Well, you kind of got the option of, you know, pulling out the paper and turning to the crossword puzzle, killing time there, or you can pick up your smartphone on graphite, call up your graphite call sheet on your on your smartphone app, turn that delay time into networking time, making a phone call to the person who's most important on your list. And, and just start knocking out those calls one by one, turn that time into being really productive. So, in summary, that's wrap up. What it does is it keeps track of who you know, where you're networking, and why you're networking, and uses intelligence based upon that to make you more, to make you more efficient at moving people from contacts to relationships. That's it. Let's go to some questions. So one of the one of the kind of one of the kind of key things that we've heard about lots of CRM systems, which is a slightly different space than we're in, one of the things that uh, problems that people have with CRM systems is the, is the double data entry. We don't want that. We want people to be able to use Graphite to monitor their networking without having to tell it everything they do. So we'll sit on top of whatever your calendar and platform is and keep track of the meetings that are in your calendars. Now, if if you if you don't have meetings in your calendars. Um, we don't have, we don't, we can't know that information. But from our research, you know, the target user base, most of these people are pretty religious about putting in their calendars who they're, who they're actually taking time to do meetings with. Oh, another question for Felix. How do the algorithms work? Brilliantly. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no the, the algorithms work. The, the, the algorithms work by. Um, there's two kind of fundamental sets of algorithms. The first set of algorithms are the algorithms that measure your current networking activities. And what we do is we look at metadata, objective metadata about the types of activities, and we score the, score the way they move the needle on relationships. And then, we, then the second set of algorithms are the algorithms that generate the recommend, recommendation list. And those algorithms look at the actual status of relationships as measured over time, 
and do some subtraction from the desired status and then multiply that in by your business goals. We've actually invested a lot in the science behind this. Um, in fact, our, on our scientific advisory board, we have the founding chief scientist of eHarmony, who's helping us doing a lot of the psychosocial modeling of how human, uh, the psychometrics of human relationships. And then uh, we also have the head of the machine learning group at Caltech, who is on our scientific advisory board, who's helping us plan out how our machine learning systems are going to adapt those algorithms over time. Great question. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a web app that's a software as a service. You don't need to install anything on it. Now, if you want to choose to receive your call sheet, your recommended list of who you ought to be in contact with in an email, you can get that as an email, or you can come and use it in the browser, or you can come and use it in the, in the smartphone. The smartphone app is the one downloadable app that you would want to have so that you can have the call sheet with you whenever you're, whenever you're on the go. certainly see there's a lot of synergy in what we're doing with um, with people in the CRM space and also in the professional networking space like at Salesforce or LinkedIn. Um, you know, those are companies that, that we know pretty well. Um, uh, we think of them as likely, at least initially, likely good ways to get our product and its value proposition out to uh, out to their users. Um, you know, what the nature of a relationship with any of those companies would be, we're open to talking and seeing where it goes. Um, but, you know, we're, we think that there's a lot of overlap um, in the value of what we bring with the value that a LinkedIn or a Salesforce brings. Um, and, and neither of them really offer a product that's like what we're doing today. Another one online? Okay, so how much admin or data input is required? Not clear. Okay, so how much data input is required? What you need to do is you need to tell us in clusters who are the people that are most important to you and it, to what level do you want to move that relationship along? We'll take care of the rest. We'll suck in your calendar information, we'll suck in your emails, we'll suck in your address books, and, and we'll put all that in without you having to input it. So you just give us some general, general advice about the clusters of people that are most important to you and what, what status you want the relationship to be with them over time. Absolutely. One of the things, I don't know if you saw this, is Sean was moving around um, some of the meeting choices. If you actually move a meeting down to very poor meeting, it'll go down as, a, it'll go down as absolutely zero value in the relationship. And our model, and our model would treat that as an event that would cause a relationship to decay over time. Yep. Great questions. Thank you all very much. Uh, happy to talk with you more about it after we hear from all these other